Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of MMA and Coffee. On this episode, it's a recap of Fight Night, Johnson and Hayes. So the first fight, Whitaker, Jacare. Yeah, okay. You're just funny because you're like looking at me, waiting for me to say something. You're like, first fight, and I'm like, which one was first? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was a. Uh, I mean, he won the way he said he would, or the way we said he he would if he did win. Right. I mean, he knocked him out. It to, was crazy. To, to me, it was an upset. At the same time. Like if we recap, it was it wasn't a huge upset, but it was an upset. It was an upset. Like Jacare was the favorite. Yeah, he was on a big roll. Uh, submitted people. It cleared up middleweight. I mean, yeah, Romero's but easily the number one contender. Right, and there's no one else even close. They're gonna do Bisping GSP, but Romero obviously deserves the title shot. I so, really think there's an argument. So there. what I would say is you'd have Romero's number one contender, and now you have Musashi and Whitaker. They should fight. Yeah, they're yeah. the next in line, and then I'd have Jock Ray and like Rockhold. That would be a decent fight too. So, <laughs> I mean, that's what the middleweight looks like. In that fight, so the first round, Jock Ray went for a takedown, they had a crazy scramble, but Whitaker got back up, and I felt like that, right after that happened... The momentum shifted. Well, it, it, at that point, Whitaker was able to dictate the fight yeah. where he wanted it, and Jacare seemed like he was like, okay, well, I'll was, stand with him. It's like he, he was too game to do it. Yeah, it, he, it there, was, him the fight. there was no sense of urgency to take him down. In the second round, he didn't even look for a takedown. Yeah, I don't think he had respected Whitaker's stand up enough, and that's why he lost. Yeah, he was he, just he was too too relaxed about standing with him. He should have been constantly trying to take him down. There should have been a sense of urgency to take yeah. him down. At least mix it up to where he doesn't know if you're going to stand with him or take him down. Right. You know? But the, I think at that point, too, uh, by the second round, he had already been dropped. Uh, so yeah. he kind of wasn't he, all he, there. Yeah, who knows what, what was going on in his mind, if anything. <laughs> I've seen it in post-fight, too, where Whitaker said once uh, he, he feels like a lot of fighters don't respect his punching power. And then once he hits them, they seem hesitant to yeah. go for takedowns or even engage because they don't want to get hit. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened. After he hit him, it's that's like exactly what happened. he just yeah. kind of froze. Yeah. So He's probably rocked. So anyway, it's spectacular crazy. knockout, really. Yeah, it was, he, it was a, to me, that was the best he's ever looked. Yeah, that, that against was, the toughest guy he's ever yeah, fought. Yeah, it was the biggest fight yeah. and it was the best he's ever looked. So they were perfect. <laughs> We uh, called the next fight wrong too. Right? Well, no, oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Win. I said that if she submitted her, it was because she hurt her. Yeah, that is what happened. That's what happened. I didn't she call, so her. Rose caught, her, caught Michelle Watterson with a head kick. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? Like, right. I was thinking maybe a punch, but a head kick? I guess that's why it worked. She didn't expect it. So, yeah, caught her with the head kick, got her on the ground. And when she got her on the ground, it was like, she was a matter of time. She yeah. was hurt. She just went through. Uh, honestly, too, uh, Michelle kind of did what um, Holly did to Misha. She tried to jump back up. Yeah. And she gave up her neck when she was trying to get back up to her feet. And uh, the way Rose, she went actually for submission before position. Right. Usually, uh, someone when you're doing grappling, they'll go for the position then the submission. Since she went for the submission first. She caught Michelle by surprise because as she jumped up, she yeah. went for a neck before she even had the hooks in. Yeah. So she got it, and then she did the hooks she, afterwards, yeah. and then sunk it Just in. Just pulled her down, basically. So it was it, it was a pretty slick move. <laughs> yeah. Well, also uh, Michelle was making the mistake of kind of leaning back sideways. Um, it kind of looked similar to Matt Brown and Cowboy, oh, or yeah. even Cormier against Rumble, where yeah. the fighter is sideways and kind of keeps leaning a certain way. So she was doing that. So once she did that, she got kind of predictable. Yeah, she yeah. she threw the head kick yeah. in the opening. So that was uh. So I guess she fights the winner of uh. She'll fight probably the next yeah, title yeah, show. Yeah, so she'll she's fight Joanna most likely. <laughs> 
but uh, and then uh, the third fight too, man. They were all good finishes. Yeah, all yeah. of them. All of them. It's one of the Is best it? fox cards. Yeah, yeah. Ever. You, you, I, I read that the the. The views were low though, which is uh, understandable, but I think in the replay it might get some more. Right. Some more well, I said it was like the lowest for Fox. Yeah. Which to me, actually watching the card, it was a great card, especially a free card. Well, it was scheduled opposite of the first day of the NBA playoffs. That so, and, you know, uh, that I, and Mighty Mouse isn't a huge draw. I like him, but he's not a huge Mighty draw. Mighty Mouse kind of so. said that, you know, he felt like they didn't promote it at the same time, too. Yeah. Because, I mean, they did it really. Double, yeah, there's a they double edged sword. They promoted it on Fox Sports, and that was it. FS1, that's the only thing I saw commercials on. Right. So, uh, what did you think about the fight? I, I was thinking that Reyes, Hayes might survive, and uh, I, he just got dominated everywhere. And I kind of figured he would, but if he watched, might not went for the submission. Just he right. went for the finish and got it. So, if you rewatched the fight, the, the number one thing that stood out to me was. Mighty Mouse's lateral movement, he would he would circle, but when he decided to throw a punch, as he punched, he's already off the center line of Hayes, and so he was constantly circling around him as he was hitting him, which opened up knees and kicks yeah. to the body, and then I, I guess once he felt so comfortable and that he, he pretty much was picking him apart and hurting him, then he took him to the ground. And by that point, Hayes was hurt. It's kind of like the same, you know, yeah. uh, black belt, you keep punching them, and then <laughs> they're a brown belt, purple belt. So he, he was a black belt, but he was so beat up and tired. He's a white belt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the pace. Yeah. I don't think he was used to, I don't think anyone. Could, no way no could, one's been able to keep up with there's no way he could pre pace. There's no way that Hayes could prepare that pace. Yeah. And he was, he was chasing him instead of cutting him off. I'm glad you brought up the lateral movement thing because well, why do you think he's been working on that? It, it might be for a fight against Dillashaw or Garbrandt or Cruz because it was noticeably better. He's always been good. He's always been fast, but his his just his movement was noticeably better. His ankles were, were really yeah. good. His, his boxing looked maybe the best I've ever seen. And uh, Hayes was doing like one to two punches where Johnson was doing combinations. Yeah. So he wasn't just throwing one It's strike. just crazy. He looks better and better. Like. The Elliott fight was kind of weird, the, you know, the fight before, but I think that was just because Elliott was style. unorthodox. Yeah, he had a weird Elliot's style. Elliott's big and he's a grappler, yeah. it's unorthodox. He's hard to prepare But for. this is, I mean, Mighty Mouse is in his 10th defense and he's looked just as good as he did in his first fight. I, I, his I, first I, defense. So I would say too, you, maybe you, better. you're seeing he still hasn't plateaued yet. Which is crazy. He's still growing yeah. and confidence. Yeah. You know, each time he finishes these guys, it's making him more confident. And you watch fighters like uh, like Anderson Silva when he was at his best, right? Like he just oozed confidence, and it just shows you when a fighter is not afraid, right? To commit and is very confident. John Jones, another example, where they'll do stuff that other fighters won't because they're unsure, right? He's definitely confident and. Unlike Anderson, he hasn't got to the point of like cockiness. So I can see, I think he's gonna break Anderson's record and then it's time to move up. He needs to get the record and move up. That's what I think he I think say. everyone's been saying that so, too. And he knows it. Yeah. I think once he- There's nothing left for him once he breaks the record. Well, it's Literally. funny, Dana White was saying he could just keep defending him and just crush the record. Yeah, but once it's broken, it's kind of like, what's the point? That's well, how I feel anyway. I do feel like uh, him moving up though is gonna get him the big paydays. That he, that he deserves. That he deserves. And he wants him, obviously. Yeah, and to uh, get the, you know, the recognition that he yeah. needs. That's, that'll help him get his name out there, too. If you, you know, two-division champ, ultimately. So, yeah. Anyway. All right. That's what we thought. Would you think? Agree, disagree? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. All right.